Are you there we go. Audio's, audio's on now. <laughs> okay. Was I, oh, was I had no audio? Yeah. I, was I, I had no I, audio? I guess I didn't push it in all the way. I said, was I had no audio? Was you had no audio? Was I had no you audio? Had, you had no audio. <laughs> I had no audio for a second. But anyway, it's Thursday, and so that means it's another live stream day for us. And uh, today's going to be a short one. I have to, um, i got to take my dad to the eye doctor. Yep. Poor guy can't see, so i got to get him to the eye doctor today. So we're going from 1 o'clock to 2 o'clock so that I can take my dad to the eye doctor. Uh, and so today, what I'm doing, um, right now, I'm, I'm still working on my uh, acting for animation course. And uh, there's another shot that I want to animate where I'm talking about subtext. I start getting into, you know, we start with the basics and then I'm going to get into some more complex types of acting. And this one is uh, all about subtext, one of the last videos that I'm going to be talking about. And, uh, and so subtext basically, and at least in this video, I'm having a character that's eating some food that he really finds disgusting, but he's going to try to feign that, and everything he says is talking about how delicious the food is, but you can see through his acting that there's something more to that. So that's subtext, and so I want to play with that. And as I'm creating that, as I'm thinking about that animation, I need to come up with a character. So I'm going to come up with a character today. That's what I'm going to work on. Um, also... I want to remind you guys, I mentioned it last Tuesday, or this past Tuesday, that um, we've got a brand new course that's available now for pre-order uh, at CreatureArtTeacher.com. That's my website, CreatureArtTeacher.com. My friend, my good friend Ronnie Williford has got a brand new course, over 10 hours, on plein air painting. So it's painting outdoors, which I know a lot of you ask me about. Ronnie is one of the best that I know at plein air painting. It's done in both oil and watercolor, and he's going to take you through all the ins and outs. Not just the painting itself, but what kinds of easels to use, different boxes that you can create to take with you, how to cut, how to cut your panels, how to gesso your panels, how to prepare all that stuff. Um, but then also, he takes you through the nitty-gritty of what to look for, how to compose, how to mix your colors, all that kind of stuff. And it's, uh, like I said, it's over 10 hours worth of material. There's lots of demonstrations within the course. So go over to creatureartteacher.com and check that out. Meanwhile, for the other, for the rest of you that have been asking me about my, um, my uh, uh, acting for animation course, sorry, I had to turn on the fan. It's kind of hot in here. Um, it's going to be ready, hopefully in the next three weeks, three to four weeks before Thanksgiving, I'm hoping. Um, I've That's still got, goal. what's that? That's the goal. That's the goal. Uh, I've got a couple more shots that I want to animate. And then I'm also going to take you through in real time on some animation. And, uh, so there's a lot to cover for acting for animation. And so I want to make sure that it's nice and thorough, 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 thorough. thorough. and, uh, and that you're getting your money's worth. So be patient because it's coming. Meanwhile, I'm going to go ahead and start uh, drawing. But like always, I've got Dustin right here. Say hi, Dustin. Hey, guys. How's it going? <laughs> Good to see you. And then I've got Nick in Sarasota. And uh, he's also going to help answer questions. So, you know, we're, we, we broadcast on multiple platforms at the same time. So we're, we try to get to as many questions as you can. I know there's a lot of questions we don't get to. But just keep visiting each week, uh, and hopefully we'll get to some of your questions down the road. But I'm going to go ahead and get started, and uh, I'm just going to draw and talk, and you guys can ask questions, and there we go. So let's go to the desktop, Dustin. Yep. So, there. so here's this character that, um, that I've just started sketching. And like I said, he's this guy that uh, he's eating food. He's sitting, uh, and I think it's going to be his son or daughter. And they're going to be little toddlers, and they or not toddlers, but they're young, and they tried to cook dinner for him, and he's trying to eat it, but he's also trying to, he's trying to be the good dad and just talk about how incredibly delicious it is, and thank you for cooking dinner, honey, uh, that sort of thing. And so he's trying to choke it down. Um, the character, I've kind of got a base idea of what the character is going to be in my head, and I kind of have this idea, this shape, in my head, here. I like big ears on characters for some reason. I just do. And the eye is going to be about a third of the way up on the ball. Like so. And I like... 
characters with big expressive eyes. And I keep the eyes about an eye width apart, just like in regular humans. Some folks noticed uh, the skulls in the background while you were talking. What kind of uh, skulls are those? Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> I've got a polar bear on the left over here, right there. Yeah. So that's a polar bear. That's right there. That's a grizzly bear. The one on the right? No, in the middle. That's a oh, grizzly yeah. bear in the middle. And then on the right is an African lion. So let's, I'll show you. So we've got polar bear, giant, huge, largest carnivore on earth, polar bear right there, monstrous. Hey, Nick just said Rivers is watching the stream and he'll be right, and Nick will be right back. He's changing a poopy diaper. Awesome. <laughs> and then uh, right here we've got a grizzly bear. One of the largest carnivores on Earth. Boom, look at that. You can just uh, put my head right in there. Crush my skull. And then here's a lion, which lions are giant when you get up to them. And this just really feels puny when in comparison to that polar bear skull. Well, there's a lion right there. And now, but even that, uh, the, teeth are, the teeth are huge. It'll so, bite your arm off. <laughs> bite your head right off so there's uh those are my three skulls there then up on top up on the shelf you probably oh you can't see the shelf no. um i've got wolf leopard coyote fox and bobcat actually this is a great skull for those of you that uh, let's see here let me move this stuff This is a real skull. This isn't a cast. I love this skull. We've got lots of these in Florida. Oh, <laughs> you had it on. <laughs> yeah. I hope you didn't see my butt. Oh, so, I think I saw a little bit. My big alligator skull that I've got. I love this skull. This thing's giant. You can see this. Hope I don't drop it. I don't want to open it. Uh, <laughs> but, is that a... That's a real one, right? This is a real one, yeah. So you can see, that's massive. This is a big, this is a big gator. That's a very big gator. So that's my, my alligator skull. That's a real one. That one's real. I've got a giraffe skull back here. I've got all kinds of skulls. But it's a wonderful room of death. It is a wonderful room of death. But let's go back to here. So um, here, and I, I want a nice expressive nose. Nice thin bridge to his nose. He's going to come out like so. Where do you end up uh, purchasing the skulls? Uh, bone clones, mostly. For... For the the the, uh, the casts, those are all from bone clones, and then uh, the real skulls I just find in various places. Are we uh, dressing up at all for Halloween? I am not, but I'm going to be giving out a lot of candy. <laughs> I'm debating whether or not if I want to. If I do, I'll end up most likely wearing my old uh, toga outfit. Toga! Toga! So here's uh, my basic character here. This is my zero pose, so to speak. This is kind of the... This is what I've got in my head. I wrote, Dustin, can you please tell Aaron that he is one of the best things on the internet? Way up there uh, with good old Bob Ross. I hope so. Thank you. That's that made my day. Because Bob Ross is one of my favorites. He's, he has such a calming voice. He really did. So I want to make those ears go back just a little bit. I've got them sticking out a little too much. But coming up, and then I want that hair to give it a nice get a nice shape up on top of his head. Get a, I'm going to get a few angles there, like so. 
and then somewhat of a thin neck, a long neck. And I'm thinking I might put him in a dress shirt, like he's just come home from work. He's got an office job, maybe. He kind of looks like he's related to Milo Thatch from... Uh, oh, <laughs> yeah, I guess he could be. With Milo the angular Thatch. chin, the long neck, the short hair. Yeah. So there's that. But what I really want to do is I want to explore f expressions. Did I just draw on the same? I did. I drew on the same level. Let's do that. Have Hello. you ever had a big lack of inspiration and what do you do to overcome it? I just draw a lot. I really, uh, I really push through it. I, every once in a while, I do get a lack of inspiration, and uh, I just don't feel like drawing, but I have to. And uh, um, oh, let me see. Diesel, there we go. I'm talking. My brain was shorting out. <laughs> um, and so I just force myself to draw, and I just work through it. Just you just end up working through it. Kind of like Shadow of Love once said, "Just do it." Just do it. <laughs> so. Now I, I want I want to try different expressions. The idea is that he's eating food that is disgusting. But he's trying desperately to put on a good face. To work for the animation field, uh, about how many years in college is it to work for an animation studio? Before I get into an before you get into an animation studio, yeah, I was in college for two years before I got hired. But then I went and finished my third year of school. So I'm guessing the three years is kind of the average for. Uh, yeah, I mean it, it's whatever, it, and I know guys that never went to college that got in. It so it really depends on, you know, you don't have to have a degree. You know, I, I saw a thing yesterday where somebody was saying, you know, you have to go to college because the studios want to see, you know, that paper, that degree. That's not true. You don't have to. You just need to do, be able to do the work. If you can do that work, then, then, uh, you know, then you're able to get in. Now, granted, some people need college. I think college is really expensive, and so you might want to think about your options. Um, but... You know, I think there's a lot of other ways to get your education nowadays. And, you know, if you would have asked me this a year ago, two years ago, I would have probably said something different. But um, it's, I think it's getting ridiculous how expensive school is. So it's I think it's, a, it's getting out of hand, man. And the only real reason at that point for college is for... Uh, just to build a connection. What? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why, Nick? So Nick Nick sent proof of the of the poopy diaper. <laughs> <laughs> Reminds me of when you were a kid, Dustin. <laughs> oh, it's in my peripheral vision. I can see it right now. I can still see it. I'm looking at my drawing and I can still see it. Take it down! I can smell it. Have you drawn any female characters? Oh, yeah. I'm just not drawing any today. But uh, what I was going to say about the uh, about work, uh, going to a college is, is the college uh, is best for like making connections. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's yeah. that. But some people really thrive on uh, working, you know, alongside the com camaraderie of working alongside uh, other people right. as well. And he's trying to smile, huh? I, I, I try, you know, the eyebrows for me are the real key. 
So I try to establish those first. And here he's probably squinting a little bit. Uh, I just spit on my screen. Uh, Nick's got a new question for you. Periscope question. How do you study so intensely and not burn yourself out? You know what? Sometimes I do. Sometimes I, you know, I got to walk away. But I just love what I do. That's the key. I really, really love what I do. And so I just don't get burned out. You know, I've been doing this for, for, I'm 50 years old. I've been doing this professionally for 30 years. And, uh, but I've been an artist for most of my life, you know, for a good 45 years, ever since I was a little kid. If you identify with a religious belief, uh, does your faith have a role in your art? And if so, can you talk a bit about that? Uh, for me, that's personal and I keep that personal. So no, I'm not going to talk about it too much. If it's, uh, if you have your own faith that you feel like you want to put into your artwork, then I think that's great. Um, I've got my own approach to that part of my life. And like I said, I keep that pretty much to myself. And, uh, you know, my, my, uh, my beliefs are my own. I don't like to, you know, I, I, uh, I, I have a strong belief in, you know, as you guys know, trying to do good and, and, and uh, making sure people's lives are better and trying to, trying to help people out as much as I can. And um, beyond that, I, I pretty much keep to myself. Do you think the animator survival kit of Richard Williams is a good way to learn animation? I think it's definitely a great start. The best way to learn animation is to do it. So, yeah, take that if that if that's what you're using as uh, as um, inspiration and a tool for learning, then I say definitely. And he's trying. <laughs> he's trying to smile. Looking forward to CTN. I see you're doing a talk on mentoring. Looking forward to it. I am doing a talk. I didn't know I was doing a talk on mentoring. Um, you know you were doing a talk on Mulan. I'm, well, I'm, I'm going to be part of the, the Mulan 25th anniversary uh, panel. So there's a bunch of us getting together that worked on Mulan and celebrating its 25th anniversary. And we're going to talk about what it was like to work on the film. As far as um, talking about mentoring, I don't know if I'm going to be doing that, but I am going to be giving some demos. Was it on Mulan when you had that, uh, when you pulled up that coleslaw prank? What's that? Was it during the production of Mulan when you pulled up the coleslaw prank? I don't think it was. I think it was when we were making Trail Mix Up. Wow. What type of music inspires you? All kinds. I love all kinds of music. Blues, rock, classical, chill out, electronica kind of stuff. Um, all kinds of stuff. He's like, huh? I have a lot of learning to draw books, but are there any that you would recommend or any anatomy books you would recommend? Yeah. Um, uh, Samantha Youssef has got a great book called Movement. And I, I think it's Movement for Anatomy. Um, it's really good. Um, matter of fact, I wrote the foreword on the book. I really love it. And uh, so I would really recommend that. Um, for creature type stuff, anything by Terrell Whitlatch is gold. Um, otherwise, just get out there and, you know, try to find as much stuff as you can in real life. And also, you know, there's a lot of stuff on the Internet to be found as well. But keep in mind, books are books are a start, but really getting out there and just getting your canvas dirty, your paper dirty, whatever it is, um, that's the best way to learn. Playing with facial expressions is one of the most fun things that I find to do when doodling or warming up. What do you find is a good way to warm up when working on art? 
for me, I, I like to do the same thing. I like for warming up. I'm just a lot of times I'm just drawing. I'm not even really thinking about what I'm drawing. Um, a, a lot of times it's just doodling. I want to get his neck a little thinner. Uh, uh, so for me, um, you know, I don't usually warm up anymore. I just dive right in. But here's what I'm I'm trying to just try different expressions with this guy. This is what I usually do when I'm coming up with a new character. I'll try slightly different uh, proportions, uh, squashing the face, stretching the face, always trying to remember that there's structure underneath, you know? You've probably been asked this a million times, so I, I'm, I am new to your uh, videos. I'm currently looking to purchase my first digital drawing tablet. Are you using Wacom? I'm also looking at uh, Hu Huion, H-U-I-O-N, Huion, yeah. uh, because I'm on a budget. Uh, do you have any experience with Huion, or do you recommend one over another? I don't have experience with Huion, so I can't say one is better than the other, but I can say I only use uh, Wacom, and I've always, always, always had a great experience with Wacom. I love my my Cintiq. Can you go to? We don't have another shot, do no. we? Of the shoot. Um, I wish you could see what I've got, but I've really I've got a, a twenty seven a twenty seven uh, QHD, which is basically just a really big twenty seven inch screen uh, Wacom tablet, and. Uh, Oh, you, oh, you're, oh, you're doing your camera. Let's see if I can. Uh, but I, I, I love Wacom, so that's that's my that's my recommendation there. Uh, the next question from Nick is, uh, I can't seem to transition from paper to Wacom. Any tips, please? Well, if you're using a Cintiq, uh, I think that's going to help you. I'm, I'm imagining you're probably not using a Cintiq. Uh, for me, because I was using a Cintiq, I had no problem uh, transitioning. So here I'm, I'm going to have him cough. <coughs> He's cold. Coughing up a hairball? Yeah. Got to get that jaw down. Have you ever had an interest in directing live action films? I have, actually. Very much so. Uh, I don't know if I ever will, but uh, yes, very much. I have. Food coming out. <coughs> I'm working on my first storyboard uh, this October. Uh, have you worked as a storyboard artist or have any tips to share? Yeah, I have worked as a storyboard artist uh, on different films that I've worked on, um, and you know, there's there's a, I've got a great course um, on our website by Lyndon Ruddy on specifically storyboarding, his approach to storyboarding. Lyndon Ruddy is one of the best story artists I've ever met, and um, and he has a great approach and a great way that he explains it. But for me, I approach storyboarding a lot the same, very closely the way that I, the way that I uh, thumbnail my animated shots. I think of storyboarding as thumbnailing an entire sequence and then animating, you know, like when I get ready to animate something, I'm thumbnailing a shot. But with storyboarding, you're thumbnailing a sequence. So that's pretty much how I think about it. So I try to phrase out dialogue, phrase out ideas, and find expressions and poses that are going to... Um, match those those phrases and then that's how I kind of approach my storyboarding. I got a Twitch question. Hello, what should I draw to improve my drawing? What should I start with? You can start with whatever you want as long as you're drawing. I don't know you personally so I can't tell you but draw anything that interests you. Um, if it interests you then then draw it. I would stay away from cartoons. Um, draw reality. That would help. 
that's going to help you in in getting you know drawing what you know rather than what you think and then that will help you later on down the road when it comes time to design if you do want to do cartoons then you know it'll help you know everything we do at disney or pixar or whatever it's all based in reality we you know they're all even the stories are based on experiences we try to make believable stories that people can get behind even things as crazy as inside out you know those are situations that everyone can associate with and get behind and art is the same way you want it to start some place that is believable and so that's that's why I recommend starting with reality and then from there you can abstract I say you should draw up Dustin in this way. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see, I try to go very quickly, and when I'm coming up with new characters, I want to get as many ideas down as I can. And when you're outside, uh, what do you use? Uh, an iPad or something else, or just paper? Just paper. I'm traditional when it comes. When I go, when I get away from my desk, I stay very, very traditional. Matter of fact, can you go to the camera? I always carry a little satchel. This is my arty. If you go to LiloRosh.com, LiloRosh.com, these are really great handmade art bags that they that they make. I get them. Uh, they're very reasonably reasonably priced, and um, you know I've got they open up and they've got all their I can keep all my pens and everything in here, but um, you know I just got back from Japan. I took this to Japan with me. It's a great over the shoulder bag, so you don't have to worry about it. And you know here here are so I, you know I just draw on paper. There's some there. That's a sketch I did in the park in Japan, in Tokyo. So I'm always, I try to jump back and forth. There's a guy that was just sitting there uh, eating his lunch, so I sketched him. Um, but there's always, uh, I always like to go back and forth between traditional mediums and, and uh, digital. It keeps me, I think it just keeps me more well-rounded. So that's what I do when I get away from my desk I'm always uh, I'm always traditional sometimes I'll, I'll bring my my uh, uh, iPad Pro out but not very often what are the fundamentals you feel an artist should continually practice throughout his or her life I think drawing from life is a fundamental that everybody should do as an artist Drawing from life just really keeps you, it's what I do as often as I can. That's why I, you know, I, I draw on that sketchbook and I, I go to the park and I look at people and it's always, you're observing. And that to me is fundamental to creating good art, is that observation. And how do you decide which pose is better when you draw a character? Um, oh, that's a good question. I don't know. I just find, you know, usually it's a shift. I don't want poses that are going to be really even, you know, static, even poses. I try to find poses that are more dynamic or at least a shift in weight. That's a good question. That's really good. Uh, when did you first start delving into cartoon drawing? When I, um, I think every kid does it a little bit. So even when I was a kid, I was doing it, but I wasn't really focused on that. I was focused on getting animals and that sort of thing. And, uh, um, it wasn't until I went to Disney that I really started learning the fundamentals of character design and um, how to approach how to approach you know cartooning and, and that sort of thing. So I think Disney. So in my twenties, my early twenties is when I really got into it. Oops. 
I'm drawing uh, using internet reference, uh, how important is life drawing or doing concept art and animation? It's, it's vitally important. You can't just get by on just getting stuff off the internet. That's, that's a good way of, uh, you know, for sometimes, <laughs> I guess. But um, it's vitally important to draw from life uh, as often as you can so that you can, you won't need those references. Yeah, I'm trying to. How do you decide on your subject matter to draw outside of these live sessions? Is it spontaneous? Like today I'm going to draw another bear or dog, etc. Or do you plan ahead? No, it's usually spontaneous. Um, or I'll, I'll be going, I'll go through my reference sometimes because I've got a ton of reference um, photos I've shot, you know, over the last 20 years, 15 years, whatever. And, uh, sorry, hold on, thinking, thinking, <laughs> and, um, I'll, I'll see what inspires me when I'm looking at all that. Uh, I got a Twitch, Twitch question, a two, uh, and then a Twitter question. How many hours do I usually doodle before getting into real drawing works? I don't do any hours of it. Uh, I might doodle for a couple minutes, but then I just try to get right into it. And then the Twitter question is, what do I think of matte painting? Some consider it a, f a form of cheat. I don't know what that, I don't, I think matte painting is beautiful. Never heard of, I've never heard of it as some form of cheating. I don't know what, I have no idea what that means. Well, what a bunch of cheaters. Yeah, I don't know what that means because matte painting is still painting. So I don't understand how that's cheating. Don't know what that means, folks. What part of fundamentals do you think a beginner should begin with? Uh, perspective, lights and shadows, shape and form, etc. It's all you can't you can't do one without the other. So you have to do them all. You, a good drawing has all of them. So for me, a, a beginner is just out there drawing and trying to remember all of those aspects that make a good drawing. What you know, a good drawing. So you can't you can't say, okay, I'm going to focus on perspective today and forget about form, or I'm going to focus on form today and forget about perspective. You can't. You can't do one without the other. Uh, but how, how do I draw from life? Where do I go if there isn't really anything in the town that I live in? Come on. I'm not going to... That, that's a, that is a... That's a cop-out. I'm just going to tell you I'm going to be a dad right now. And you're copping out. <laughs> there is always something to draw no matter where you are. I don't care what it is. You can be anywhere and there's going to be something to draw. So if you're not finding anything to draw in the town that you live in, then you're not looking hard enough. Okay, so I'm just going to tell you that. And you can disagree with me, but I'm telling you, as an artist that's been, being, that's been an artist for 30 years, I've never been anywhere, anywhere in my life where there wasn't something to draw. There's people, there's pets, there's buildings, there's whatever. So... There's always something to draw. I'd love to see you draw sea life. Have you ever gone scuba diving? I have gone scuba diving. As a matter of fact, there's a where I used to live. We used to dive all the time because I, I lived right right off of a reef. This is a, I'm laboring on this drawing big time, and uh, um, we used to live right off this reef, and we would draw there or draw there. We would dive there all the time. Um, we loved it. Remember, go, Dustin, you went there with us a lot. Remember the sharks we would see? Oh, yeah. But that was uh, snorkeling. That wasn't scuba diving. We did some scuba diving there, too, though. No? I yeah, I did. You weren't there. Oh. Remember, yeah, I, I had I had the, the, the diving bell where you go down with the regulator and uh, the floating, the, the compressor would float up top? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that a, just a more advanced uh, snorkeling? Though? No, that's scuba. You're taking air underwater. Yeah.
So this is getting a little bit, I'm getting letting this one get away from me. See, that's the one of the keys, even, you know, having done this as long as I've, I've done it, I still struggle. And I find that sometimes I'll find a pose or an expression where, I'm going to open that eye up a little bit more, where I struggle with it. And it forces me to find the form a little bit more. <laughs> you got a little expression. <laughs> I heard that Glenn Keane teaches uh, his students uh, to not use onion skin when animating. Uh, why is that? So that it forces you to not, in between lines, forces you to see the action and the form moving in space. Uh, he did the same thing with me when I was learning from Glenn. I, of course, I was learning on paper. So with him... Uh, he always taught us not to turn our light tables on, to just flip the paper, see the movement, and animate accordingly. And that, that really forces you to see, see the form, like I said, and not the, not the lines in between lines. So for the people that don't understand, what exactly does it mean to onion skin? Onion skin is, um, I'll show you. Ba, 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 let's see here. Here's a TV paint, and here's a here's some dialogue. This is a shot that I did a while back. This is one of the shots that's going to be in the in the. Uh, well, it does sound plausible enough tonight, but why don't we wait till tomorrow? Let's wait for the common sense of the morning. So that's a little shot that I animated a while back. Now, if I'm I'm going to take you back to a very rough version. Right in here. Here's a very rough version when I was scribbling it out. I'm going to take you to about <laughs> here. Oh, actually, I move in here. <laughs> so there's a key pose. Now, onion skin is allows me to see the drawing before and the drawing after. So I'm going to turn this on, my onion skin. Boom, the light table. And you can see, let me see here. Let me turn them up a little bit because they're turned down. They're in green. You can see the dr or green and purple. The one in purple is the one bef uh, coming up after, and the one in green is the drawing before. And I can turn quite a few of them on, like so. And I can turn the ones in purple on, like so. It allows me to see any number of drawings before and after. So as I move through... Let me turn this off. As I move through... The animation timeline, you can see the drawings before and after change as well. So that's onion skin. Now I usually just, if I'm using onion skin, I only turn on the one before and the one after. That's all I really want to see. And I keep everything else, I keep everything else kind of in my head. But that's onion skin right there. If I turn on this finished one you can see because I have all the in-betweens the the drawings get much closer together like so how do you rotate the drawing in TV paint without rotating the paper rotate the drawing without rotating the paper I don't know I don't do it <laughs> I'm sure there's a rotate somewhere but I just don't use it uh, where would it be I don't know someone else will know uh, but for me, I just don't use it. So I just don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, let's go back to Photoshop. Uh, do you watch horror movies? If so, uh, for you, what defines a good horror movie? I like, what about animated horror movies? Uh, I, I, well, I haven't seen a whole bunch of... I guess the... What was the one, the house that everyone loves so much animated? Something house? Okay, uh, I can't remember the, the one where like the house was alive. Yeah. Oh. But you you have posted something about how you liked it so much. Yeah. But um, for me, good horror is not. What'd you say? Monster House. Monster House. Monster House. Thank yes, you. thank you, Vedanta. So, um, you're gonna have them smiling. What defines a good horror? Movie? For me, a good horror movie is not blood and guts. I hate gore. There's that that's just that's just cheap. It's a uh, low hanging fruit. I want really good, um, smart 
horror films. Something that makes your mind go, Whoa. just happened. Yeah. Uh, the one I'm watching now, the one that Vedanta and I have been watching is uh, Haunted House on the Hill. House on Haunted Hill? Uh, uh, no, it's, uh, is it Haunted House on the Hill? Oh, ha The Haunting of Hill House. That's what it is. And uh, it's on Netflix. And that's been really good. That's That, to me, is good horror filmmaking. Yeah, usually for me, a good, a good horror movie is one that makes me not want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Every You've never been it, good with horror films. So every time I see a trailer for one, it's like, nope. <laughs> If it looks cheesy enough, sure, I'll watch it. <laughs> because there's some movie, there's some horror movies and whatnot that are just so predictable. Well, they're just, yeah, I don't like, I don't like the, like, Hostel and The Hills Have Eyes and all that crap. I think that's or, crap. Uh, or The Collect. Anything the Rob collect Zombie makes is crap, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. It's just blood porn. Pretty much, yeah. I don't, I'm not interested. I'm going to push that chin way out. Have you seen Peter and the Wolf? Yeah. I use Peter and the Wolf um, as an example in my uh, character design course. I actually designed the characters, uh, you know, for the course. I designed characters for Peter and the Wolf. My brother Travis was in a play in, in kindergarten and Peter and the Wolf. He was the bird. <laughs> Apparently you can rotate in TV paint by holding control and alt and click and then drag it. Let's try it. Let's try it. Control, control, alt. Which is probably the... Uh... Yeah using a Mac so it's uh, That's a not bit doing different. It. That just moves it around. Here, let me do it this way. There it is. I found it. That's it. I was hitting so command, not control. That's rotating with the, with the paper. The person was asking to try to rotate the drawing itself without rotating the paper on the canvas. Oh, that, oh, if that's what they're, oh, I misunderstood that question. That's super easy. You do this. You come up here and you click on this and you go, whoops, let me grab it. Come on. It's not letting me grab it. Maybe because you're still rotating or something? No. It looks like it's on a transform. It is, but there's a thing right here. Maybe it's because it's too big? I don't know why. Let me, it, it, it. Let me do this. Let's do this. I'm going to go to another. There we go. Let's do this one. Hit return. And you can see I can rotate it that way. If I grab hold of the little circle, I can rotate the character without rotating the paper. And that's how you rotate the character. It's this tool right here. It is transform. It's the transform tool. No. Yeah. So here he's trying to smile. <laughs> he said it's good. How are we doing on time? We got 15 minutes. Uh, Detroit uh, with the R key. Oh, I guess in TV Paint you can just do it with the R key. Oh. That makes sense. Oh uh, no, I'm hitting the R key and it's R Kelly. I'm hitting R Kelly. That's, I'm hitting the R key. That didn't do anything. I don't know what that did. It just gave me a box. Yeah. Yeah, somebody mentioned about um, the, the Mist, and I love I love the movie. The now Mist. I've just got big, giant crosshairs. I don't know what's... Huh. I don't know how to get rid of that now. Just drop it. I'm trying. Just, just get rid of it. <laughs> I don't know why it's doing that. Just do it. Just get rid of it. <laughs> 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 I 
There, I got rid of it. Just do it. Just get rid of it. I thought you were the master. Stop being a dork. <laughs> the master. <laughs> yeah, when it comes to horror movies, I'm more into like the sci-fi stuff, like Alien, Predator, the the Mist. And yeah. The Mist. The ending for that is so. It's so bad. It's so horrible. Like, I know. It's, it's, it's a, a tragedy. Good, it's a it's a unique ending because not really that many movies pull it off. But when you, well, no one it, goes there. No one goes there. Yeah. So when it happens, you're just like ah, crap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard. Uh, let's see. Do I? Uh, I'll try tying that down a little better. Maybe I'm going to do this. How do you know how to time your animation? Uh, for instance, where to put more or less frames uh, in order to do a fluid animation? It really it depends on where you want the movement, how quickly you want something to move across the screen. Um, where you want something to hold, uh, that's, and that just comes with time, you know, as far as how you do that, it just comes from experience. Is there a common issue you see in character designs, uh, usually in beginners or someone new in, uh, to designing characters? Yes. The biggest thing that I see is the inability to change shape. The character, a lot of character designers will young character designers will design a character and then they'll try different expressions but as they're trying the expressions they're never changing the shape of the silhouette and i'll show you what i mean let me let's say let's say we have a character let me turn these off let's say we have a character that looks like this i'm going to do something very basic so We've got this character, and he's kind of roundish. He's got a little, almost like, looks like Charlie Brown. And he's got Let's see. What's the best medium? Hold on, for? hold on, still working. Sorry, sorry. Still answering the question. So sorry, this is that. here's a character right here. I'm just gonna show the just the head. So um so there's a character really quick. Um and then let's say we want to try a different expression. I'm gonna knock this back. I'm gonna do a, a layer on top of it. So now what the common the problem the common problem I see is someone that does this. They draw the character and they go, okay, here's the head. But now I want to show him with his big expression. So he goes, ah, and we go, ah, and here's the nose. And here's the mouth, ah, like that. So there's their, there's their surprise expression. Okay, and when I click back and forth, there's no real change to the outside of the head, okay? Now, what I would do is I would go, here's the eyes, maybe make them really big. Let's push these eyebrows way up. Maybe pull the nose down a little bit because we're gonna stretch. Don't, don't be afraid to go fur, further with it. Fur, 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 further, fur, fur, further with further. it. <laughs> like there. And then what are you going to get? You're going to get a mouth, a face that's going to change shape. So now you can see the characters changing shape. Even in this, I'm, it's pretty held back. But don't be afraid to change your character's silhouette shape. Squash and stretch. That's what makes our animation more dynamic. We have about 10 minutes left. 
So that's that's the that's the most common mistake I see in character animation and character design. And even you this one, I, I, this one I, I probably should have pushed even more. But here is a little bit of a squash. Let me let me show you my character that I'm that I'm working on. Let's try it with him. So, so let's do. Not not to worry about pushing the boundaries. Like push it as far as you're as you're willing to push it. Yeah. So here, I'm going to really scrunch him up and put a lot of food in his mouth. And scrunch him way up. And give him a kind of a still a big chin. Get those eyes all scrunchy. I'm, I'm going very scribbly with this. Ears. Hair. Boom, boom, boom. Very, very quick. But then, let me knock that back. Now, maybe he's coughing. Actually, I'm going to do the same construction. And now I'm going to open that mouth. And remember, he's got a jaw. That no, I'm going to keep the nose in the same place, but maybe stretch it downward a little bit. Maybe pull that lip up. He's gagging a little bit. Say hello to Brazil, please. Hello, Brazil. 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 Abrigado. Abrigado for for tuning in. So here I want to stretch that face out. Pull those ears down. Bring those eyebrows way up. Open those eyes way up. There, see? Now, when I flip back and forth between the two, you can see that squash and stretch. Like that. So that, for me, is... That's a, that's a, that's a fundamental for good character design, is finding, finding how you can change your character's shape but still make it feel like the same character, right? We still want it to feel like it's the same character. And here he's like, he's kicking, kicking all that food out. There we go. Like that. So that, that for me is working, you know, getting shape change in your character design. Ah, uh, when were you at Disney? Did you ever work with Caps? Yes, we did work with Caps. We worked with Caps for most of the time I was there, and it was a very buggy system. Um, it was, but it was our it was our proprietary. For those of you that don't know, it was our proprietary um, digital system for tracking everything. We sh we shot our scenes, we colored, we did everything in Caps. Uh, the other question: Did I apply for Disney, or was I found? Was it difficult to get there? And what courses did I take at school? That's a lot of questions. I, w I trained as an illustrator. I, you know, I, I came up, um, I started, when I was in school, animation wasn't a big thing. It, was, it hadn't made its resurgence yet. I started uh, college in 1986, and animation was just about to get shut down, as a matter of fact. And, um, uh, but by, the, by 1988, they were looking to expand, and they were do making a film called Oliver and Company, and they were looking for interns. Like I said, I, I didn't train as an animator. I trained as an illustrator. But I thought it was interesting, and so I put together a portfolio and submitted it for this internship. And they picked eight of us from across the country. Their goal was to see if they could teach kids from really good from schools that had a good foundation in drawing and painting, they wanted to see if they could bring them in to Disney and teach them animation. And so I was one of eight that got chosen for this, and we got brought in. And lucky for me, Glenn Keane um, 
the great Glenn Keane that did the Little Mermaid and Tarzan and the Beast and all that. He was my mentor. He taught me animation. And uh, uh, and so from there, you know, I was hooked. And at the end of my internship, I was hired to start after I finished school. So I finished school in 1989 and went to Orlando. And that's where I started, started working. And uh, the rest is history. As far as uh, what I studied in school, I just studied basic drawing, painting, illustration, composition, all that kind of stuff. Uh, no animation, though. Uh, and I did figure drawing. Uh, say hit to, I'm going to say hello to Russia. Hello, Russia. Italy. Italy. Buongiorno. Uh, Greece. Hello, Greece. USA. Japan. Konnichiwa. Yeah, Canada. How's it going, eh? Hungary. <laughs> I am hungry. Malta. Hey, Malta. Portugal. Abrigado. Thank you for watching. Cyprus. Hey. Denmark. How's it going, Denmark? <laughs> France. Bonjour. Germany. Uh, how do you say I forgot how to say uh, Hello, Germany. Egypt. Hey, basically the whole world. Hello, Egypt, and hello to the whole world. We've got a whole bunch of people watching from all over the world. This is why I love doing this kind of stuff, because I get to talk to everybody all around the globe, even if it's really late for you. <laughs> so it is time for me to go. This had to be a really short one. I am so, so sorry that I had to go short, but blame it on my dad. He's got to go to the eye doctor. He had cataract surgery last week, and we got to do a follow-up, and so I got to drive him there. I got to be the good son. And uh, you just don't I, want to live stream today. Yeah. <laughs> you got to make someone's life better, even your dads, your parents, your sisters, your brothers, your strangers, whatever. So I'm going to get going. I hope you learned something with this little bit. You know, if you're character designing, you know, don't forget to play with shape change in your characters. You know, that's the basis for good animation. Here, I want to leave myself enough room with this character to really get broad with it. So you can see, there's that, you can see how broad I can get with that with that character. Um, and that's the basis for that. And I'm going to turn all those on. Whoops. Turn those off. There we go. And so these are some of the other ones uh, that are probably, um, I have to go through this stage before I can get really a good handle on it. And then uh, once I get these characters simplified a little bit more than what you see here, I can get really dynamic with them. Right now they're still a little bit clunky and it just takes a little while to, uh, to get it down. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to go over to CreatureArtTeacher.com and check out the new course from Ronnie Williford on plein air painting. It's painting outdoors. It's in oil and watercolor. And it's an amazing course. It's over 10 hours of instruction. And, uh, and you can get it for 45% off if you go over there now and do a pre-order. So check that out. It's really great. And I'm going to have my acting for animation course coming up hopefully in the next three weeks four weeks that's what i'm focusing on i'm shooting videos every day if i'm not shooting if i'm not doing a live stream i'm working on my course so uh so there's that and also we're coming up uh in the next few weeks we're going to be at ctn uh that's november 15th 16th 17th and 18th um, i think and I'm, i have no idea yes it's a i think it's a 15th through the through the 19th or 17th through the 19th or whatever Anyway, that's those. It's those, that the block of time. Um, I'm going to be there. Dustin's going to be there. Yay. Nick's going to be there. Steve's going to be there. The whole group. Ronnie is going to be there. So oh, yes. hope, yeah. So hopefully oh, you guys would come on out and see us there. I might be there. And Vedanta's going to be there. So that's in Burbank, California. <laughs> uh, it's an awesome uh, animation expo. We're going to have a great time. I'm going to do some um, demos, some courses, a talk. Uh, maybe I'll have breakfast with you. Who knows? So check out CreatureArtTeacher.com, go to CTN, uh, and I will see you guys on Tuesday. And Tuesday, Tuesday the day before Halloween, Tuesday, we're going to do a Halloween theme. So come up with something, and maybe I'll do a request. <laughs> Very good. Uh, so I'm going to do, let's make Halloween a request day, Halloween themed. So be thinking about it, and tune in at 1 p.m. Eastern Time on Tuesday. That's when I'm going to see you next and uh, I think that covers everything. So thank you guys again so much for hanging out with me, just even if it was for a little bit of time. And as I always say, go out and put some beauty back into the world. Be an artist. Make something beautiful. Do something good for somebody. Change a stranger's life. Just open the door for somebody. Put your grocery cart away when you're done. 
And with that, Dustin. Bye. Cowboy Bebop.